Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Awesome Sunday Show. Connor here. And Pat as well, but that should have been obvious. That is obvious. Connor can't do this by himself. No, I can't. Um, but uh, Pat, you know what kind of pisses me off and it's my own doing? What? I was listening to past episodes and a few times I said the Awesome Sunday Show when it's just Awesome Sunday Show. What are we, the throwbacks? I know. <laughs> it kind of it kind of angers me when I listen to it. So uh, I'm sorry, everybody out there. It's just Awesome Sunday Show. Like, it's just Batman. Mm-hmm. Not the Batman. Even though that show wasn't too bad. Right. Batman. Awesome Sunday Show. Equal levels of coolness. So anyway. Exactly. Um, speaking of uh, Batman, who's a part of DC Comics, we're going to talk about another DC Comics character. Someone that Pat doesn't really like too much. Uh, I don't think he likes hate him. him. Yeah, hate, hate him. him. It's not his Bazinga. favorite. It's not his favorite superhero at all. Um, we were talking to talk about the second fl- favorite. Second favorite. Who is your favorite? Spider Man. Oh, really? I think it. I mean, I'd have to think about it, but it's like right now the way I'm thinking is Spider Man, Flash, Batman, probably Nova, the Richard Ryder version, not that little bitch Sam Alexander. Okay. For me, I think when it comes to favorite comic book characters, it's Batman and Spider Man number two. But that's a different that's a different podcast for a different day. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna be talking about the Flash today, um, mainly because uh, what comes back Tuesday night? Flash season three. Oh, I can't wait. It's so I'm exciting. Beyond beyond excited. And Luke Cage is doing fairly well as well. I, I finished the first episode. I think you're like nine episodes in. I'm. I think at the beginning or halfway through episode nine. But I also stayed up to like 4.30 in the morning watching yeah. it yesterday. And it's very good. Highly recommend it. Yeah. I watched the first episode, but the people I was watching it with were like laughing and snickering. and like Because they're assholes. Yeah. I just, like, no, they're really good people. No, no, no. But They're assholes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love you, Ryan and Oleski and Slinger. Yeah. I was just like, I'm not watching any more of this. I, I, I'd rather, I'd rather wait longer and be impatient, mm-hmm. and but like watch it at a time where like no one bothers me with no distractions. Because that's literally like, like that's the type of show. I'm like, all right, I need a bottle of Captain, some Coke, Coca Cola, and <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. Connor's a lot of things, but he's he doesn't do. Coke. I don't. I've never done it, and I never will. Um, but yeah. So we're, we're more specifically, uh, not just about the Flash, but. Uh, due to the contents of what season three story is going to be about, we're going to be talking about Flashpoint and uh, what happens during that time event. Yeah, it's a uh, massive DC event written and created by the one, the only, the legend himself, Jeff Johns. Jeff Johns, who is, isn't he working with Ben Affleck? He is co-writing the Batman movie with Ben Affleck. <sighs> and I know we just said the Batman, but we're talking about... A movie about Batman, so we're talking about the yeah. Batman movie, which is actually tentatively titled The Batman. I don't think that'll stay. Yeah. I mean, I don't, it doesn't bother me when it says The Batman, but uh, I don't know. It's just Batman. Like, it's just cooler just saying it's just Batman. It's cooler, simpler. Yeah. You know, right to the point. Just like Awesome Sunday Show. Exactly. I All think right. we're as cool as Batman. I don't know. I think we might never be as cool as Batman. But. <laughs> No, no, of course not. Yeah. I mean, maybe I will one day, but not you. Yeah, right. (laughs) Uh, So, uh, Flashpoint, Pat, not only is this a pivotal DC event, um, and a lot of times with comic book events that happen across different superheroes and different storylines, they tend to be, like, received very lukewarm. Uh, Like, Civil War II is actually getting pretty destroyed critically actually uh and i'm not surprised yeah um but flashpoint was well received critically it um it, the readers loved it i'm apparently I, I don't know how much it's i don't know what sales figures off the top of my head but i think it sold pretty damn well yeah it was very successful and actually <clears throat> it spawned a line well involving some of the superheroes of flashpoint based timeline comics yeah themselves so like there's flashpoint batman and then the events that come with that and wonder woman aquaman and pretty much all the major players in this um that uh flashpoint event but flashpoint as great as it was storyline wise it did lead to the new 52 which um is very back and forth on the stories and superheroes that are uh a part of the new 52 like Scott Snyder's Batman was probably, and uh, and also Scott Snyder's Swamp Thing were probably one of the best stories to come out of that. Swamp Thing was incredible. Yeah, uh, don't forget Aquaman. Oh, dude, they made Aquaman badass again. I didn't. I, I I still kick myself in the nuts for not jumping on those comics when they came out 
Um, but like just reading from like in Justice League and just like huge Aquaman fans, I, I'm I'm pissed I didn't jump on it. But maybe I'll pick up like a compilation book or something like that. Yeah, I mean they'll probably be out soon anyway. Yeah. But um, yeah. So let's talk about Flashpoint. Uh, enough about the uh, the royalties and the uh, and the consequences of the storyline. Let's get into the storyline and how cool it is. So, Pat, I know you really love the Flash and his stories. So, I want you to kind of start off. I want you to start. What's going on? Um, obviously, this is an alternate timeline. Uh, due to certain events. Uh, by the way, if you never read Flashpoint or saw the movie, major spoilers. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm pretty sure the movie's still on Netflix. It animated is. version, and it's really, really good. It doesn't tell the whole story. It doesn't tell the whole story, obviously, because they have to cut it down to 90 minutes, and there's much more than that. <clears throat> to it, there's a lot more depth to it, but I think it does a good job as far as an animated adaptation movie. Oh, I absolutely. Yeah. Although I do agree with the one point, the one complaint that you have about it is every single person has the same body, yeah. pretty much. I'm not a fan of the animation in it. Yeah, it's not the worst, but you're right. It's like copy paste, and then yeah, like and there's the, like weird CG scenes like that. Very like it's I don't know. It just kind of looks like Rocky and Bullwinkle <laughs> CG. Like wow, yeah. I just but overall very it's very plain. very good. Yeah, voice cast the story. Very well done. Oh yeah, it's an excellent movie. That's just the only that's the only complaint I had, and like that's and it didn't take me out of the experience at all. But um, like I said, major spoilers. So here we go, Pat. What happens in Flashpoint? What starts off this significant event, and what changes? Tell me everything. Well, actually, I'm going to talk about it too. But yeah, (laughs) all right. So not only spoilers for these stories, but spoilers if you haven't caught up on the Flash, because oh, true. Um, this actually almost happened in the first season finale, but in the second season finale, it happens. Mm -hmm. And that's how season three is going to start. All right. So Flashpoint starts off. Barry wakes up, Barry Allen, the Flash, to discover, like, everything is different. And he has no idea why. And he doesn't for a very long time. Um, But what had happened was Barry, uh, you know, he got into this sad emotional place like all these things had happened around him he lost his father much like in season two of the flash and um you know like almost all superheroes one or both parents were dead uh barry's mom died when he was very young like probably like 10 11 or 12 that area and you know he was never the same since obviously because losing your parent especially at a young age is obviously severely traumatic yeah it could be negatively impressionable on a child yeah uh, so the flash Barry, um, well, a lot of anybody really with the speed force has this capability, but Barry is like one of the fastest, if not the fastest in the universe, regardless of what people say at one point, Wally West was faster, but Barry, um, he created the speed force when he got his powers. Yeah. So I think he always has the edge. Plus, also, later on, he gets much, much faster. Yeah, I was going to say, New 52, he like he learns to think faster. Yeah. Which sounds stupid, but in the comics, when it's written, like, when you, like, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's explained so well. Yeah, like, you know how Connor takes a long th- time to process the simplest things? I thought you were going to say it takes a long time to get an erection, because that's very true. Wow. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Not even going to touch that. Barry's the complete opposite, but... Yeah. With a speedster, you need to run at a certain velocity. I mean, I couldn't even tell you what it was. But <clears throat> he's able to run back or forward in time. He's able to time travel by running at a certain speed. So what he did was in this, you know, sadness and, you know, wanting his parents back, he went to the back to the day that his mom was murdered and prevented her from being killed. <clears throat> and, you know, when you mess with time, there's always consequences. And um, in this consequence, he altered a timeline. Not only did he alter the timeline, he created a whole new one. Uh, A very, very dark time. A very dangerous and dark timeline for sure. Um, Completely different. And, you know, there's, like I said, there's always consequences. And in this, first, it starts off pretty good for him. Uh, Although he wakes up, he doesn't have his powers. Uh, In the show, it looks like it's going to be different. His mom is alive. Uh, which is huge, uh, but his dad is dead. 
instead of being in prison. Right. Um, which, you know, it, trade off, I guess. Kind of. Um, that's a, that's also Not necessarily a good one, but. That's something they don't address in the movie at all. They don't address his dad at all. Yeah. yeah they just keep the focus on his mom. Granted, which I understand it's an hour and like because, 12 minutes. <laughs> yeah, which I understand because like he went back to save her. He didn't like go back to, I mean, at, one of the benefits of saving her would have been his dad not going to jail for her murder. But, you know, he still did die in this timeline, um, although three years before like the day he wakes up. So he doesn't have any memories of his father being not out of prison. And <clears throat> But his mom's alive. He doesn't have his powers. Still works for the CCPD, Central City Police Department, as a forensic analyst. Um, and then, but he's okay. He's content with it because his mom is alive. Yeah, he has some sort of parent to connect to on a daily level. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, he had been miss his mom for, you know, over half his life. And obviously he was thrilled to have her back. But the consequences didn't start yet. Some other things that came out of this timeline... Captain Cold is Central City's greatest hero. There's no Flash. Captain Cold, who's normally a bad guy, the you know, pretty much the leader of the rogues, is a hero. Which, you know, strange enough. I don't see that happening on the, the show. Actually, I don't think that, that will happen. Be he was on Earth 2, actually, the hero of Central City on Earth 2. But also, Justice League was never founded. No. Mm -hmm. In this universe, there's no in this timeline. There's no Justice League. Um, Cyborg is the, like almost like kind of replaces Superman as the American superhero. Yeah, Cyborg is uh, the greatest hero in the world, at least in the country. Yeah, uh, he works directly for the president. Um, there's a different Batman. There's a Batman, but which is probably the coolest addition ever. I yeah, this was definitely one of my favorite parts. There is a Batman, except it's not Bruce Wayne. He died yeah. that night in the alley instead of his parents. And the Batman is his father, Thomas Wayne. Yeah. And he is a very different type of Batman oh. than his son. Wields guns. <laughs> Wields guns has no problem murdering people, yep. like murdering Th villains. Doesn't give a shit. Doesn't give a shit. His costume is really sick, though. I really like that a lot. I like it, too. It's very gothic. Um, also, too, it's very, it's very, it's such a... It's such a uh, sad outcome, like when you really think about it, because the way, like when Bruce Wayne, his vigilantism is is whether you agree with it or not, if you know within the Batman universe, of course, um, cop wise or or citizen wise, like there's always a certain level of respect because in some storylines, uh, Batman doesn't kill; he always turns him into the police. He's respected by the police. Um, Thomas Wayne in Flashpoint is probably just as bad as the villains. Yeah, he's but, wanted yeah. just as much as the villains. And not only does Bruce's dad become Batman, but his mom goes insane and more or less becomes the Joker. Yeah. More than the less. But yeah, she becomes the Joker, goes insane, you know, does these horrible things. So, you know, this is complete, two complete extremes. Yeah. Thomas Wayne is, becomes an alcoholic, a, a, a severely damaged alcoholic. Yeah. And instead of Wayne Enterprise, it's Wayne Casinos mm -hmm. that keeps his vigilantism uh, afloat. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good. It's not good. Um, and <clears throat> two huge things. Actually, it's one thing, but it's the biggest problem in the Flashpoint universe <clears throat> other than the way it affects Barry is Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and their kingdoms are at war. <clears throat> yeah. Which actually is the most dangerous part of this timeline. Right. They're at war. You know, the Amazonians are on land. Aquaman, his oceans cover 70% of the world, or you know, however much it is. And they're both extremely powerful. <clears throat> and they both have large armies that are also very powerful. <clears throat> and they're in conflict. It's like a... Started off with like a, a little love triangle, and then yeah. Wonder Woman. Well, Aquaman, who's married. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so much. he was cheating on his wife yeah. with Wonder Woman. Slams Wonder Woman. Yeah, um, and then Wonder Woman gets confronted by Aquaman's wife, takes her head off, and that's what really starts the war. Yeah, like that's what like puts it in the full force. But back before that, uh, like we said, Barry. Doesn't have his powers. 
his memories of the other timeline are starting to be rewritten to fit the new timeline. Mm -hmm. Uh, So not only does he not have his powers, but he's forgetting what it was like on on his timeline, like what it was like for him to be the Flash, what it was like for the the heroes of his timeline. And, you know, not that everything was great there, but it was better to hear Aquaman, Wonder Woman weren't fighting. There was a Justice League. Yeah. Um, There was some sort of social structure, even among superheroes. Yeah, exactly. You know, there was a unified force for good. Um, And so he's forgetting that. So he goes to Bruce... uh, Wayne Manor, I should say, to the Batcave and is looking for Bruce. Turns out Bruce isn't there. He's surprised. He's shocked. Uh, Thomas Wayne, Batman, almost kills him until Barry like talks his way into explaining how things work. Um, Thomas was happy to hear that his son was alive in that regular timeline, uh, which comes into play later, actually, in a very, very poignant moment. Um, and Barry gets... You know, is wants to get his powers back, so he do, he recreates the experiment which gave him his powers, uh, which is get struck by lightning and doused in these certain chemicals. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> First time they do it, skin gets burnt almost completely off. Yeah, didn't work. Works the second time, gets his powers back. He uh, pops out out of the flash ring his costume, reverse flashes costumes in it. Yeah, toying with him, <clears throat> toying with him, and he can't believe it. He's shocked, but fixes it and then uh him and thomas try to come up with this you know this plan to help the situation you know barry needs knows he needs to correct the timeline you know he needs to at least save this timeline if he can on the meanwhile uh you know on the attack of the um on the land a lot of it takes place in europe like the damage because Mm -hmm. the amazonians are near greece um Deathstroke is a major player in the world and goes to, you know, fight for the land and try to take out Wonder Woman and Aquaman or both. Deathstroke's kind of a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, and it's more because he wants to live. Than, like, yeah. he, he gives a shit about the rest of the world. Uh, so he goes there. He brings some villains with him. Aquaman stabs him through the chest, kills his, uh, his team, takes him out. Um... So, uh, you know, Cyborg is sent by the president to try and ease out the situation. He tries to recruit Batman again to help him. Barry decides to try and help him. Uh, the government sent in this small team to try and take him out. You know, take out, uh, rescue Lois Lane, who's actually not just a reporter, but is more like a CIA agent, more or less. Yeah. <clears throat> Saves her. Um, they get killed. Barry and Thomas and Cyborg are working. Barry's, you know, they know, they see how severe this is. And he goes, well, where's, where's Superman? Where's Clark? Nobody has no idea who that is. Yeah. Another thing that's different. This is my favorite yeah. twist. When Superman landed on Earth, instead of getting saved by the Kents, Cadmus Labs, uh, took him. Yeah. And they kept him in containment. Well, what happened was is he didn't really exactly land in um, in uh, Smallville. Right. I almost said nowhere, Kansas, from Curse a Cowardly Dog. But uh, yeah, he almost he doesn't land in Smallville. He like lands in Metropolis, right? Mm-hmm. And like, don't they blame it on a comet or like something? Yeah, or... they cover it up. Yeah, <clears throat> and they take him and they keep him sealed, like in this cage. Oh, not cage, but you know, more or less a cage ever since he landed so for like 20 years or however long it was so he is not even close to the superman that you know never received uh you know the power from the yellow sun uh, like that's what like gives him his power mm-hmm. and his strength um and is like almost like a stick figure has doesn't even know like really how to speak he's more or less you know like if a kid wasn't stuck in the wild for his whole life like yeah that's how it is so Barry uh batman cyborg you know go and try and get him out they get him out superman flies out and then leaves leaves just rushes off and (laughs) thomas actually goes well that was a great idea yeah (laughs) he's the time which was really funny um so then it's pretty much non-stop to try and stop this war with what they have 
Uh, Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern, is killed. Although I don't even think he wasn't the Green Lantern. He wasn't the Green Lantern. He was actually just a pilot. What happened was, is I believe if it if it's if the comics are accurate to the movie, um, or I'm sorry, if the movie is accurate to the comics, uh, I believe they found Abin Sur's ship mm. and didn't. But the but the uh, the ring never found Hal. Right. Right. All, so they so they have like Ivan Sir, but um, they still have his ship, and so they they Hal tries to pilot the ship, right, to deliver a nuke, more uh, to just yeah. take out Wonder Woman and Aquaman, you know, try to save the rest of the world. Uh, he dies. Um, so not only is there you know no Superman, there's no Green Lantern in this timeline, two major heroes, and then with with this war, once Barry gets over to Europe. He sees Thawne. Thawne's taunting him. He goes, Barry's blaming this new timeline on Thawne, the reverse Flash. And he's just like, oh, it wasn't me. It was you. And Barry just has this earth-shattering moment that he did something selfish and evil and created you know, this apocalyptic mm-hmm. timeline. Uh, so then they get into a battle. Flash, uh, Reverse Flash leaves. Um, another huge thing that really happened that was uh, very devastating the Shazam family, all of them, with like Shazam, Mary Batston, all the other ones, get killed. They mm-hmm. all get killed by the Amazonians. Uh, you know, Shazam is extremely powerful, and so are each member of the family. But so it's even more superheroes that are dying. And Barry's realizing like he completely ruined this, and he realized what he did that created this timeline. He he saved his mom. Yeah. So him saving his mom created this horrible timeline where everybody's about to die. Yeah, it's either like it's either the mo- your mother dies or the world is done. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, and that's no exaggeration. You, you the, give like, up your yeah. mother's life in order to save seven billion, or you just let the seven billion die, and you know do what you can, even though you'll die in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then so throughout this, he's fighting with Dawn. In the meantime, Aquaman has this, you know, this D-Day weapon. He has this weapon that will end everything. And he captured Captain Adam, who is... Another a, ridiculously powerful superhero. Very ridiculously powerful. Actually, he can kill Superman. He Yeah. He has the ability. Whether he does. Or, he, but, can't, he, can't, he can't produce kryptonite, but he can right, produce other... Like the uh, red, red sun radiation yeah. and all these different types of radiation because that's what powers him. So he has him in like this reactor thing and they're charging him up to try and release as much radiation to make this mega nuke as possible. And like that's the, that's the end all be all weapon. So throughout, while that's getting, you know, charged up, one of Aquaman's top advisors is, you know, trying to prevent it. He gets killed. Um, Aquaman and Wonder Woman come face to face, coming to blows. They, I think Aquaman, oh, she kills Aquaman, right? Is um, that what happened, or was it the other way around? No, I believe. Um, I believe she, someone cuts off Aquaman's arm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I for, I kind of forget how it goes down. Not gonna lie. Uh, but they talk while they fight. Yeah, they do talk while they fight. They come, you know. Um. Yeah, in the end, they try and they end up coming together as the bomb is finally going off. Uh, while this is going on, Flash is fighting Thawne. Realizes what's happening. Thawne is kicking his ass. Reverse Flash is kicking Barry's mm-hmm. ass. And one of my favorite things in the in the in the movie, it takes place. It's a little different than in the the comics. But during this fight, while Reverse Flash is taunting Barry, you know, saying this stuff to him. Fucking Thomas Wayne Batman shoots him right through the heart, Mm -hmm. kills him. So Barry, um, who is very injured, he has this metal like steel beam through his leg, and you know his leg's damaged. Starts running, trying builds up speed. The the Captain Adam is starting to blow up, and the world is about to end. Um. And then this is actually, I mean, we should have mentioned this before, but earlier on, Thomas Wayne gave Barry this letter and he said, you know, when you fix the timeline, give this to my son. Mm -hmm. 
So Barry finally is able to get enough speed. He accepts that he needs to let his mom die, you know, which is obviously you know is, horrible. Yeah. Uh, you know, having to let her die all over again in this time after he prevented it, he needs to let her die. Um, able to fix it, stops the version of himself that went back in time from doing it. So he resets the timeline. He gets back to normal. Uh, he still has all memories of the other timeline. He's talking to Batman, Bruce Wayne, as things are set back to normal. And Bruce is a little skeptical about it, but believes him at the same time. And just like, can't believe the events. And then this really like... Well, before you go on, I don't mean to interrupt, interrupt you. There's oh, a we he- did mention... Yeah, I did forget to mention. What? Yeah, why don't you say? No, no, no. You say, because I don't know if I'm going to say what you're going to say. Um... During this big battle between Aquaman and Cyborg, actually, before Aquaman and Wonder Woman succumb to uh, their battle, Superman shows up and saves the day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Is that what you're going to say? Yes. I was actually going to say two things. I was going to say that, um, but also, two. uh, one thing I really like about Batman and Flash is they're two separate characters. They couldn't be more different, but there's a huge respect between the both of them. Yep. you see it in like some if you if you're not if you don't really read the comics and you watch the, the television shows like Justice League Unlimited, um, there's a great there's a great episode where they have Flash Day at Central City and like or and, uh, Orion is just like why are they like celebrating this fool and Batman's like you just don't get it yeah and in Justice League War Batman's like I've seen your work like I'm like really impressed like there's a huge respect between the both yeah, of them um, exactly and I like I kind of like the dynamic so that's why like when you say like Batman kind of doesn't believe him but does. Like, he knows, like, Barry's not just going to make something Yeah, he's not going to make yeah. something like that up. Like, it's insane. Uh, you know, especially if he brings up his dad. You know, he would think he'd be a huge douchebag to bring that up. Oh, but yeah, Superman actually, in the end, does come back. Still can't save that timeline, but he comes back, saves Cyborg, and then the Captain Adam nuke is going off. Barry finally is able to reset the timeline. As he's explaining this all... To Bruce, you know, he, he has proof. He goes, here, this is for you. And he opens the letter, and he goes, right away, this is my father's handwriting. Reads the entire letter, and then you see tears fall onto the letter mm-hmm. from Bruce. You know, he's a very touching moment, and he thanks him. And, you know, and you could tell that it really had an impact on Bruce, which was great. Uh, it was nice. And then, you know, everything's fine. Everything's resolved. Barry runs off, gets back to his day-to-day thing. But you can tell that there's, it made a huge impact on him as a person and as a hero, and you know, brought had a positive effect on Bruce in the end with that letter, I'm sure. And actually, in the end of the movie, there's a post-credit scene, and a boom tube opens up, and a horde of parademons emerge, which is part of Justice League War. Yeah. Uh, even though I the the frame the time frames are off in Justice League. Uh, war and this. Yeah. Justice League War, no one's ever met each other. Yeah, exactly. Which so is like kind of stupid. <laughs> yeah, the way that they went about it, like it doesn't make sense for them to have that as opposed to Christ, Christ, it doesn't connect to the other one. Yeah. Because they're like, bat, like Batman's like, his like power levels like crazy. You know, like in Justice yeah. League War, it's like, dude, didn't you like know Superman? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, One thing I want to mention about the voice cast, Kevin Conroy, the best Batman ever, was... Batman. Um, he was Bruce Wayne, actually. but And Michael B. Jordan was in this, actually, as Victor Stone Cyborg, which I thought was really cool. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, also in this was uh, Carrie Yules. Who's Carrie Yules? Uh, you know, um, he was, uh, or I'm probably saying it, Els, he was in uh, Princess Bride. He was... Um, oh, that dude. He was a liar, liar. Saw. Saw, yeah, he was in the first Saw. Well, actually, he was in the, the later ones, but he was the guy in the first Saw that cut his foot off. Yeah, dude, that guy's awesome. Yeah, he's great. I mean, he's been a, a lot more stuff, but yeah, he's great. Uh, he was Orin and Aquaman. So I thought that was cool, like two two big names that were in it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but if you haven't read the comic series, highly recommend it. If if you don't want to and you just want to watch the movie, definitely check it out. Yeah, it's the still movie's great. great. Yeah. Still great. But yeah, that's one of my favorite uh, DC events and Flash stories of all time. Yeah, it's it's a, you know what it is? It's like, a, it's really hard. There's so many elements to the story. 
um, because there's just there's so much riding on DC history in general going through it. So and there's so much stuff you have to change that the fact that they that the fact that it was consistent in its storytelling and um, but didn't disrespect a lot of the characters or anything like that is really what makes it stand the test of time. It's just mm-hmm. a really good story in general. It is, you know, and it and you don't need to know every character to to right. appreciate it, right? Uh, and you know what? And it led to the new Fifty Two, for better or for worse. You know, some really good things came out of New Fifty Two. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, some there's some butt hurt people that like sh- like shit on the New Fifty Two. Mm-hmm. But you know what, man? The New Fifty Two brought some of the best storylines I ever read. Yeah, and, and it granted, revitalized some characters yeah, like, that needed it. Granted, I'm 25. Like I, I haven't been reading com. I've probably been reading comics religious, like like regularly on and off. Um, more recently, like the past few years on, uh, for about 15 years now. Mm-hmm. So like. I granted, I know, like in the '60s and '70s and '80s and '90s, has been huge and you know great storylines. But you know, the New Fifty Two for like our generation was pretty fucking sweet. Mm-hmm. You know, for some, for certain things, was there was there some shit? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Superman sucked in New Fifty Two. Yeah, he did. He did, and that's and it's Superman. Um, yeah, which yeah. is like weird. You would think like your top two biggest heroes, both of them would be phenomenal, like how Batman was, but Superman not so good. But they made up in other areas with Swamp Thing. I don't think ever really got a lot of credit. No, in yeah. terms of popularity, and then Swamp uh, Thing was incredible. Martian Manhunter, I thought was pretty solid. I missed out on Martian Manhunter. Um, I know with Green Lantern, I think that was kind of mixed a little bit. Um, I like that was, I believe, Jeff Johns that did a Green Lantern. I, I liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really know a lot of people that disliked it. But with Jeff Johns doing Green Lantern, uh, it it was the uh, it, it, I didn't really care for the story too much. Mm-hmm. That like like Hal Jordan wasn't Green Lantern anymore. Sinestro was a Green Lantern. Yeah, and the Guardians were uh, now like pretty much the enemies. And there there was a, you know how like before Green Lantern it was the Manhunters. Yeah, and then became the Green Lantern Corps, and then they were doing like a third police force getting rid of the green mm. it was it was i don't know it was all right yeah and you know what? it's it's weird because but now green lantern's fucking sweet and, and because of that storyline so right. i don't regret it yeah and it's weird that like because jeff johns has done a lot of great things for a lot of characters oh yeah and this is by no means a bad and, story like his green lantern rebirth series was extremely well received by a lot of people i didn't read it but i heard it was excellent i, I read the, the flash new, the new rebirth? rebirth not the new one oh. uh it was like i forget when it came out, but it came around around the same time as Flash Rebirth, not the most recent one. Well, it was around the time of Blackest Night, wasn't it? It might have been. Because Blackest Night is incredible. Yeah, like, it's I, incredible. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, I know you probably like Flashpoint more, but I like Blackest Night more. I mean, because they're, I think they're both excellent for different reasons. Like, this is more of a Flash-heavy thing. Blackest Night revolves a lot on all the characters. Yeah. They all get, like, their day, but... The I really like the um, the supernatural side to it, yeah. An element and like the the Black Lantern core I really liked a lot. I also like I just anytime Atrocitus has a time to like be there. Atrocitus is sick. Yeah, I'm just excited. That's why I'm excited. He's in uh, Injustice too. Yeah, I, that's awesome. It's great. Um, so yeah, we're gonna take a little break, but you want to stick around, especially if you watch the Flash show. Should we get into uh, a little bit about Kid Flash, Wally West? Let's so, do it. See you in a bit. All right, hey everyone, but welcome back to uh, part two of this episode, where we're going to get into a little bit about Kid Flash, Wally West. Yeah, um, a lot of people consider Wally West to be the best Flash. I don't personally. I but don't I know personally you, either. I know you like him. Oh well, I love Wally not, West. Not that I dislike him, but I yeah, yeah. I do. I pre- I prefer Barry Allen mm-hmm. over Wally West, absolutely. Um, but I do love Wally West. Um, I like how Justice League, the the TV series, and Justice League Unlimited, where it was essentially Wally West and Barry Allen, personality wise, kind of mixed together. Yeah. Um, but Wally West is a fantastic Flash, like totally worthy, kind of like you know Dick Grayson being Batman. Like mm-hmm. I can see it, you know. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, I do like Wally West a lot, actually, and you know he has some really good stories. He's a actually a great character. 
um, both original Wally West and then New Fifty Two. Yeah, there's I'm, there, I'm, there's a lot of people that prefer Wally West as the Flash over Barry Allen. I know like IGN.com in 2011 uh, ranked Wally West number eight on their list of top 100 superheroes of all time. And I'm pretty sure that ranked above Barry Allen Flash. Mm-hmm. So again, I disagree, but respectfully, we I know we both prefer Barry Allen, yes. but don't let that deter you from listening to our podcast. Let's talk about Wally West and why he's awesome and why he's going to probably be awesome in season three of the flash. Yeah. I mean, we only got a little taste of him in season two. Uh, you know, he was in several episodes, but you know, we, he was really developing. We didn't get a lot into him. You know, he was very standoffish at first. Uh, so we were really limited in interactions with him. Uh, you know, and obviously he didn't get along with Barry for a long time until after he saved Barry's life, uh, Barry saved his life and was like, Oh, Hey, I'm the flash. Uh, then they started getting along, but um, he's going to be even more important. I mean, he's important to the entire legacy of the Flash. Like we said, he's technically the third Flash because it went Jake Eric, yeah. Barry, and then. But so, he, he's the, the second way- Flash in the Silver Age yeah. starting line. Yeah, because Jake Eric was then changed to Earth too. So the way they retconned it, he actually did become the second Flash. Yeah. Um, third Flash chronologically yeah, speaking. Third Flash ever created, really. Yeah. And. Uh, but yes, for you know, if you listen to the first half, you know what we're talking about. The results of this new timeline created by Barry in season two of The Flash is going to result in Wally West being the Flash of Central City of Earth One when we start season three. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just a yellow suit and everything. Yeah, his suit looks great. I love it. I like it. I, I as much as I love the Flash suit and, and the Flash. And I think this just might be because it's it's so new, but I think I like that costume more than Barry's. Than Barry's. You know what? That's not a bad point. I think I, I can probably agree with that. I, but I have to wait till season three is over for me to finally. Right. Be, All right. Plus, like, is it just because I, it's so new? Or I mean, it does look great. Like, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but I think that Barry's going to get a new suit anyway. Um, so we'll see. But no, it is a fantastic suit. Uh, and I'm, you know. Obviously, they can't do Cyborg as the hero of this new timeline um, because, you know, DC is really cool about stuff like that. <laughs> Although I'm glad I'm – I don't mind because I'm glad that they're bringing Wally into, you know, with powers to, you know, take over this role because I was waiting for him to have it all last season. You know, and then towards the end when he got hit with the, the Speed Force explosion mm-hmm. or a Dark Matter that him and uh, Jesse Wells were hit with, I was like, all right, he's going to have it. And Joe thought he had it too, you know, when he drops the mug and, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk a little bit more about him, Connor. Would you like to take the lead on this one? All right. So Wally West is the technically on Earth One the second Flash. Uh, he started off as Kid Flash. He was a sidekick of Barry mm-hmm. Allen. Um, we're you know he's one of the best, if not the best, second generation hero. To come out of like yeah. sidekicks wise, right? And I, we've I, kind of, we've we've had that episode topic in our heads for a while. Yeah. Best second coming superheroes. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the nephew of uh, Iris West um, and later Barry Allen's wife. Um, so what happened was is he was always a fan of the Flash, a big fan, big fan of the Flash. Uh, Wally West was. And one day he visits Barry at um, Central City Laboratories because Barry Allen is a uh, crime scene investigator uh, or scientist or whatever we want to call it. Um, and of course, what happens? The freak accident that gives Barry Allen his powers happens to Wally West. Right. And Wally West, now electrically charged with chemicals and um, all fancy stuff like that, becomes the new Flash, or I'm sorry, the new Kid Flash. And um, dons the red and yellow famous Kid Flash suit, which I really like that suit a lot. Yeah, I did like it a lot, actually. But uh, yeah, so he became one of the big DC sidekicks along with like uh, Robin, Nightwing. Uh, He's also like over the years was a huge part of the Teen Titans. Yep. uh, Which kind of pissed me off when he was not in the show, when that show came out, even though I'm not the biggest fan of that show, but... I know you like you, it. You love Teen Titans Go. I never watched an episode of that. I never want to. I yeah. watched two, and it was awful. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he um, he's been a huge part of the comics. Like I said, like we 
discussed before, he um, uh, he becomes the new Flash. A lot of people, a lot of Flash fans prefer him. And uh, in the 1990s, uh, he that's when he starts to become the big uh, become the Flash. There's more uh, development to his character. He's not just a sidekick. Yeah, he yada, become, yada, yada. he takes over the role of the Flash because Barry dies. Barry yes. sacrifices himself during Crisis of Infinite Earths, and it's up to Wally steps up to become the Flash. How does Barry die in Crisis of Infinite Earths? Um, well, if you you know, is very similar to what happened at the end of the Flash uh, season two, like how he ran so fast, put so much energy into destroying that weapon that was going to destroy the mm -hmm. multiverse except this time it was done by the anti-monitor that he was just disintegrated and he was actually absorbed into the speed force right but nobody knew that they thought he just dead was dead because he kind of he went so fast that the speed force overwhelmed him he was able to save you know destroy that device and save the multiverse uh but he you know they thought he was dead because he like disintegrated and disappeared yeah and they thought he was dead for years. And uh, that's a, that's actually like when he does come back around Blackest Night when he talks to Hal Wait, Jordan. Flash Rebirth. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, he's just kind of like, how many people died when I was gone? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, seriously. Because, I mean, Blackest Night, there's so many dead heroes in it already. But actually, when he when Barry came back, um, Wally was very doubtful of him. Right. Like, didn't believe it. Didn't believe it at all. Um, but, yeah, as a result of that, Wally became the flash and you know there are a lot of great stories with wally he is a great character uh one of the biggest things to come out of him was another reverse flash second reverse flash uh called he went by professor zoom and then well actually he was just zoom never mind yeah he was just uh, a bar dawn start off with professor zoom but then was retcon just to be reverse flash uh but yeah zoom which we did see in season two of the flash although very different than the, how the comics worked. In the comics, he is Hunter Zolomon. He is Hunter Zolomon, that's for sure. But he was a he was Wally's partner. Wally was on the police force. Uh, he was a cop, and he was Wally's partner. Had his legs damaged permanently by Gorilla Grodd. Creates an accident to give him powers of the Flash. Uh, his powers are actually different because he's able to move between seconds. He doesn't actually have super speed, which it makes him seem like he has super speed. Yeah. So essentially, like he. He move, like time around him moves very slow, and he yeah. and it's the illusion of him going very fast. Right. Whereas the Flash actually runs very fast. Yeah, technically, when he's moving and running, he's actually time traveling in a way, mm -hmm. almost. Um, yeah, but he's that was a, a significant thing. Um, but yeah, sorry, go ahead with Wally. Oh no, I I I just kind of told the origin. I don't know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't. Yeah, I I don't really know else to go off from there. <laughs> That's all right. Um, but yeah, Wally. Uh, you know, he did get his sidekicks after that. Um, well, Bart Allen was the was the next sidekick, wasn't he? Yeah, Bart Allen was the next one. Uh, but Wally did take over for it was like twenty something years. Con in, in, in like the, in our yeah it was tw it was around 20 something years where wally west was the flash like every like he was the flash like if you picked up a comic in a comic store for a while that was it it wasn't until around like blackest night uh like i think it was like mid-2000s or something like that when barry allen actually came back i don't remember but i also when i really got into flash was around flashpoint for barry allen so yeah let me see. Barry came back in Flash Rebirth, which came out. Let me see. Yeah. Keep looking for that. Uh, uh, June I, 2009. 2009? All right. Yeah, which is where Barry Allen came back. He emerged from the Speed Force. Yeah. See, like, when Barry Allen comes back, then what happens to Wally, is, what happens to Wally West then? He's still there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, yeah, Wally um, is very doubtful of Barry. Um, they come in. You know, he's not coming in. And when, uh, let's see. Yeah, Wally stays. Like, they kind of co-flash the city, really. Right, yeah. Uh, but. Because right now I'm reading DC Universe Rebirth, which mm -hmm. is pretty damn good, actually. That's um, what I've heard. 
Um, and I'm reading the actual Rebirth comic. And I, 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 I picked up the issue and, uh, dude, it was like six bucks. And uh, Wally West, Kid Flash, is in the Speed Force trying to get a hold of people. Yeah. Yeah, actually, during Flashpoint, he was in the Speed Force. He was trapped in the Speed Force. Okay, so DC Universe is is a callback to to Flashpoint when that event happened. Yeah. Okay. N- we're fig- oh, I'm glad we're figuring this out right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Uh, let's see. But yeah, like what I really liked about but that's well, that was also the appeal of Wally West too to a lot of people at the time. Uh, is the fact that yes, he was. He was very similar to Barry Allen power wise. Uh, mm-hmm. At one point, you were right, as you mentioned before, he was faster than Barry, even though Barry becomes more powerful than New 52 um, at that point. So, what I really liked was he, even though he retained the Rogues Gallery to a certain extent, um, the dynamic of like the changing villains of like, even though, yes, he did have a reverse flash, I liked the fact that it was a different character with. Different power. Like, if you really think about it, the powers are severely different. Yes. Um, right. But just the same outcome. And I think that got a lot of people back into Flash mm-hmm. um, at the time period. So just like how Barry Allen, him coming back, is got people into Flash again. Yeah. You know, that's when I picked up Flash comics. So Wally West is a very significant character um, in, in, in just DC lore. And I, I'm really excited to see him in, Sa- in uh, Flash Season 3. Me too. I'm... As soon as they announced, like, or they showed the trailer that he has his powers. Well, remember the promo image they they released? Yeah, looked awesome. Yeah, where he's just like looking down, like brooding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, at, another big thing to come out of uh, Wally is uh, his wife Linda Park, who we did see in both seasons of The Flash. Although Barry actually dated her, um, she was heavily involved with Zoom. Like Zoom ends up killing her. Uh, they do end up having twins who also have powers of the Speed Force. But going into Season 3 of The Flash, Wally, I, we don't know how long in this new timeline that he's been The Flash. I'm mean, guess it's not that long. Mm-hmm. Um, but he does work with Cisco still, it seems like, at least in the, the way the promo I've seen. Uh, Iris is aware that he is The Flash. Uh and there's this one funny part in one of the commercials where Barry calls him Kid Flash, and he's just like, "Don't call me that. Don't you fucking call <laughs> me that, you little shit." But uh, yeah, I mean, I I'm really interested to see how. I would love on the CW. Don't fucking call me that, you yeah. little shit. <laughs> That'd be great. I, I uh, dude, I would, I would, that would complete my life. Like what? It that would, would complete your that life. Would complete that small life. thing. Yeah. Because the only times in the CW they're in situations and they're like, "Holy cow!" Like, yeah. Come on, like, dude, come, come on, really. Say it. Say it. It's a part. It's a problem being like network. If they were up a couple channels, they would be able to say shit. But oh yeah, absolutely. Like Conan is up six channels. He's on TBS. Or, I mean, at least on Comcast, I think it's like six channels, and he gets to say shit all the time. Kind of. Well, I think he. They limit how much they say it. I'm sure that you know it's a problem. But yeah, because like it would Louis, be C- Louis C.K. was on there one time and he says shit and he goes and he looks at Cody's like sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they also are allowed to say pussy. I would like call people pussies. I would like to see that on the Flash too. That that'd that would be, cool. be amazing. That'd be hysterical actually. You just be like you know what? Or right. right. somebody could just be like to Barry. You know what, Barry? You're being a real pussy, you little shit. Yeah, like, dude. And the only times I wanted to tell that to Barry in fucking <laughs> season two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but no, I, I'm really interested to see how their relationship in this Flashpoint timeline is going to be. Apparently, the Flashpoint events themselves, that timeline is only, I think, it's like three or four episodes, and then they uh, f- to fix it, I think, but it's the effects of it are going to last throughout the entire season. So while the timeline won't be there the entire season, at least the effects and carryover will be. And I'm really happy about that, too. Yeah, because, because you know, I don't know if I can take twenty three episodes of like an alternate timeline. Not only that, but you know, they're it's a very stripped down version because they can't get all of the major heroes that were in the actual event and the movie. Yeah, to do it. So like, it just wouldn't be the same. So it's smarter of them to keep it to a limited number of episodes and move on from it. Yeah, I agree. It's especially like, I'm I'm curious to see the villains that they have for for the Flashpoint. Uh, part of season well, three. Well, the one is, uh, if you look in the promos, 
This yeah. is a very different version from how he is in the comics. Uh, sp- specifically, look wise, we won't know until we learn more about him, actually. But the rival is seems to be um, Wally's reverse Flash in this right in this timeline. Because in the comics, it's in the comics, it's Hunter Zolomon, who is his arch enemy. Yes, uh, and they already did that last season. The rival is actually Jay Garrick's reverse Flash in the comics. Yeah, and he kind of in the comics he looks just like him. Yeah, he's more or less the same thing. He just uh, they look almost exactly alike. Except the rival is darker. Yeah, he's darker. Uh, his costume's different. He covers his face with like this blue stuff. But um, yeah, so his costume design is very very different. It's similar to Zoom's. Um, the mask is uh, a little more open. And then he has, instead of like, they don't look like lightning bolts. They look like, um, on his ears, they look like bat wings, kind of. Really? Which is weird. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure it's not going to you know affect it. But in the promos, we do see um, Barry and Wally fighting together. But Barry's going to start to forget his powers the longer he keeps this timeline together. Thank God, because that's the one... As much as I love season two of The Flash, I love that season, even though I think season one's better. Um, fucking, I can't stand how much they teased two speedsters fighting together mm-hmm. when that never really happened. No. It kind of happened, but not really. They fought against one another instead of fighting together. Well, at the season finale, there's multiple berries. Yeah, but I, at the time remnant, I I was not really a fan of it. No, like, I the, was... The whole time... It was cool when zoom stabs his time remnant through the chest like the second time yeah. like in the the last episode or second last episode or whatever like that was cool yeah like and then, can i have a time remnant that just pays off my credit card debts yeah. like and then uh you know obviously it worked out well for when barry ended up saving the whole multiverse using the time remnant to do the crisis on infinite earths i was actually if they didn't use the time remnant uh, they had to because they need to like they've the producers have said Barry's going to stay the main Flash. Like, we're not going to hand over the mantle. We will see other Flashes. Yeah. But Barry's going to stay the main Flash. Which is, I'm, I'm really happy. Good. Um, because if they did kill him off, technically Wally didn't have his powers then. You know, Jesse Quick was in a coma and didn't have powers. She might have had the Speed Force in her, but no powers. So None. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but we will be seeing... Jesse and Earth Two Harrison Wells again. I'm looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to um, Dickhead Rich Cisco. Rich Cisco. Yeah. In the the one quote he says, he goes, "So there's an alternate timeline where I'm not rich." It sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it probably would, because uh, you know the way. However, rich he is in that, yeah, it'd be shitty. Um, yeah, but that uh, you know we want to. Ex- the show's going to explore Kid Flash more, so. Uh, you know, watch it, let it unfold, and, you know, I think that's about as much as we can get without going, like, super into detail and extending this episode a long time. Yeah, I'm like, we just give you a little bit of origin of Wally West and who he is, like, in the comic-wise, and, you know, I guess this could be a what-you-need-to-know episode a little bit. Yeah, you, know, and you know what? We're actually going to start, like, a little series on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, for I'm upcoming, glad we're doing it. Uh, I'm the genius who had the idea, you know, no big deal. I only thought of the name of the show, it's okay. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, I also <laughs> thought of Nick's at Night, too, which should be a podcast between Snyder and Vanderbilt. Uh, we're trademarking that until they use it, so don't fucking use it. Yeah. yeah that is a, that is a great title. Um, yeah, But, yeah, for upcoming heroes, you know, before the movies or if they appear on any of these shows, you know, I think we're going to do a what you need to know for these people, like we did for, um, you know, Luke Cage on our last episode. It was a great episode, Pat. Goddamn right. It's always a great episode yeah. for us. Uh, yeah, but that's going to wrap it up. Like I, like we said, flash it back this Tuesday. Fucking pumped. We're enjoying Luke Cage so far. Um, so remember to like, share, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, download and rate us on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash awesome Sunday show. Follow us on Twitter at awesome sun show. You could also follow us on Instagram at awesome Sunday show. Add us on Snapchat, awesome Sunday. Uh, follow our personal Twitters. I'm Rick Pat Mick. I'm at less than Connor. That about wraps it up, guys. Thanks for listening, and uh, you'll hear us soon. Peace. <laughs>